So without further wait, here's Redstone. A lot of people. Wow. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Redstone panel. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Redstone panel, everyone. Minecon. It's exciting. Uh, so we have 40 minutes this year, and we got a lot to get through. So uh, what we're going to do first, we're going to introduce everyone, and then we are going to, I have some pre-selected questions from a video I put out. And we're going to get through some of those first. Those all will get, you know, it'll help us get through questions a little bit faster, and it'll set the tone of the panel. And uh, and then from there, we're going to open up to Q and A, and I'll let you know when that's going to happen. So why don't we start over at the end over here, and uh, we'll all introduce ourselves. What was my name? Generic B. Hi, everybody. <laughs> what? Oh, I do redstone. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot the question. Uh, so typically, I do a smaller, more achievable survival redstone um, that anybody out you could, uh, out there could do if you're just wanting to do like little farms or something kooky. I put a kooky spin on everything I do. I try to anyway. All right, my name is JL2579, and I'm trying to represent the Zip Crowd uh, crew. So I'm actually working together in a group. We are on a server, and we focus on yeah, trying to push the limits of what's possible in survival. So it's, uh, we need redstone for many of our contraptions, but it's also about um, exploring and abusing a little bit of the game mechanics. So for example, one of our most recent projects was uh, we figured out a way to um, create uh, spawners by modifying the world generation in vanilla survival Minecraft uh, in air. So yeah, that's the stuff we do like, and we have a server where we pretty much try to build all our contraptions in a survival build, and yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> no. Oh. No, that's what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Seth Flynn here. And <laughs> I too like redstone. Um, I, uh, I do lots of stuff with redstone. I like to make custom maps, and I like to invent things that are useful to people in survival Minecraft, and tutorials, and recently I've been doing more survival Minecraft on the Minecraft server, and that's been really fun. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much me. Is oh. mine work? <laughs> um, I'm Traslander of the Exile server, and yeah. I work on. Uh, I do a bit of PvP maps with our little Whiskey Brigade um, map making group, um, and yeah, I invent redstone stuff for maps. And, yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, yeah, it works. I'm Doc M77. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, representing German engine <laughs> representing German engineering, that's my approach of redstone. I'm kind of yeah, trying to find efficient ways to use redstone to farm mobs. That's that's my thing. So it's almost yeah, it's more like a practical approach as well. Not so much creative, also more survival based. Yeah. That's it. All right, cool. <laughs> Well, I guess let's jump right into the questions that we have uh, pre-prepared. Okay, here we go. Uh, what is the best way to become familiar with redstone? I try very hard to understand it, and it continues to fly over my head. Every time I want to build something involving redstone, I have to look it up online. I would just like to know how to make my own contraptions without having to refer to the internet every single time. I think that's a great question, and I think a lot of people here have that question. Anyone want to take it? Sure. Yeah. I'll go first. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I think the, the first thing you need to do is understand just the, the little parts of redstone. What's redstone dust do? What's a torch do? What's a repeater do? Um, because they all have multiple roles 
in, uh, in Redstone. A repeater, sometimes you use it for delay. Sometimes you might use it because you don't want it to mess with anything else in your contraptions. Um, <clears throat> I, did a, uh, I did a series called Redstone Academy, um, <laughs> which you can look up online. Um, helps you with all that type of stuff. Um, but really, it's once you understand those basics, you can start piecing things together. It may not be the most compacted uh, invention in the entire world, but you'll get it going and you don't have to even look at YouTube unless you want to be entertained. Yeah, I'll say, um, you know, the question asked about, I have to look everything up all the time. And honestly, when we were starting out, I think most of us had to look everything up all the time. And it's just something you learn over time. And as you, as you build something a hundred times because you need it in a bunch of redstone contraptions, you just start to learn, okay, this block goes here, this block goes here. And, and uh, I, th I think a lot of people find redstone intimidating, but really, you just start off with something simple and, and try and build it, and then try and build something a little more complicated. And, and, uh, and I think that's the best way to start out and just build experience. Yeah, I want to add something. You want to say something? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I kind of took the opposite route. I picked something complicated. I had an idea for something, and then looked up and figured out all the basic parts that would put that project together. I think the motivation is what really drives Redstone. If you, you find something you think will motivate you, that's what you need to find, just that you can find all the parts. Then you, you, you can either ask for help and figure out what parts need, what, how can you do this or whatever, or you just can look it up and on the wiki or whatever. Yeah. As I said, I'm more for the engineering approach. Good engineers don't know everything, but they know where to look for stuff. <laughs> so um, why, you know, invent everything new if you can already stand off the shoulders of a giant, you know, and um, progress from there. So I actually say there's no shame in having to look up things because there yeah, are so many people working on redstone inventions and there's a yeah, evolution going on. You know, a standard, let's say, RS knowledge that was used half a year ago might be outdated by now. And a good example was when hoppers were introduced, kind of revolutionizing many things, for example, clocks and timers and other things. So actually, it's a good thing to regularly look up, and I do that on YouTube. And it's a good source for finding new designs, also Reddit, Minecraft inventions, and so on. A good place to look, and I don't think uh, it's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So there's. We have a few more. We have a few questions here that we're gonna. That are kind of. They're simple questions that we're gonna try and get through quick. Uh, why do you like redstone? Anyone? Do you like redstone? Anyone? <laughs> yeah. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, I like redstone because I'm. A, I'm a programmer, and it's. It's a lot like programming. You can really control everything, and. Uh, and. And do pretty much whatever you want. It's fun putting all the little parts together and seeing your projects come to life. It's about interactivity. You know, um, the Minecraft itself, I, I always like when th things work, and that's what Redstone does. Um, um, I, I've played with LEGO before, and at some point I started LEGO Technic building actual pneumatic motors, and then again to, uh, to Minecraft, and so, hey, you can actually do mechanics and engines, and uh, that's, uh, I'm just not fa fascinated by not moving objects, it's just cooler if something happens. That's my approach to it. Yeah. It's okay. I, I concur. Well said. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Uh, how did you get interested in redstone? Well, I might answer that. Well, I had a mob farm back in the days, in the alpha days, and I was up in my mountain base, and I wanted to know when I caught a pig. <laughs> so I needed something to blink and beep. And I thought, okay, there's this redstone stuff, let's see what I can do with that. And that's how it started, since that, uh, basically everything I built includes redstone, for whatever reason. It's kind of weird, but yeah, true. <laughs> I started off with minecarts. I just wanted a fast way to get from place to place. I started with doors. <laughs> <laughs> like wooden doors? Um, well, lava curtain door, actually. Yeah, cool. it's like, it'd be really cool if there was a lava curtain door right here. All right. Um, what was the first redstone contraption you ever invented? For me, it was a minecart thingy. <laughs> it was like you could arrive at the minecart station and then get out and go do whatever and then get back in the minecart and it would automatically launch off. That was your first thing? 
That was my first thing. You're a too. liar. <laughs> my first thing, I had two switches and an iron door. And they, <laughs> and they had to be in a certain position. It was basically an AND gate. And in real life, if you, if you looked at the redstone, it wouldn't fit in this convention hall. It was so poorly done. That was my, that was my first one. Yeah, actually, it was minecarts as, for me as well. Since at the time I started with redstone, the only thing you could actually pretty much do with it is build a minecart station. There were no pistons. There was just redstone, a door, and minecarts. And the rails you could uh, switch with a redstone signal. Yeah. So yeah, also did a minecart station pretty much. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is your all-time favorite redstone creation that can be achieved in vanilla? Well, <clears throat> Jell mentioned it before. Lately, the zip card guys did something completely insane. I mean, yeah, as you mentioned before, they manipulated the vanilla um, world generation by, uh, by implementing redstone, by pushing certain structures into certain unloaded chunks, and it included a crap load of redstone signs. It was um, a week long, or weeks of research, and a lot of people contributing, and that was, to be honest, the video really, you know, blew my mind even uh, when I know what was coming right now, and that was by far the most impressive sim I've seen in vanilla redstone, for sure. I mean, there's creative stuff that also blows your mind, but survival style, that was sick, if you ask me. I think that one was really cool, too. Uh, but I think, personally, I, I go with the classics. The redstone CPU is the coolest thing. Uh, the very first one that was ever made. Uh, do you guys remember who? I can't think of them. Anyway, um, yeah, just like building an actual processor in Minecraft, that's so cool. And, and people have evolved that over time, made better and better processors. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think Notch actually has liked the f very first processor YouTube video at that time and was fascinated by what, what people could do with Redstone at that point. Yeah, I know Notch has said that that was his favorite. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's creation. what you, uh, when you really wanted to make re Redstone more functional because it was already so cool. So, yeah. There's so many that have blown my mind basically daily. I can't even begin to pick one. All of them. All right. Uh, did you have any wiring experience before Minecraft slash Redstone? I guess this is more like what kind of experience did you have? For me, uh, I have a degree in computer science, so I have, you know, I've taken logic classes and that sort of stuff. Not that I think it's necessary to get into it, uh, but it definitely, I think, helped me uh, when I was you know, trying to understand how all the logic gates worked and how you could fit things together. Now, I, last year, the beginning of last year, I learned what an AND gate is in Minecraft. And it just, all of it's from Minecraft. It's just really interesting to, that you can learn all that stuff from it. I was an uh, electrical and computer engineering major. Uh, so yeah, similar to Seth, a lot of uh, logic gates, except I was burning them on little chips instead of uh, <laughs> building them in redstone. Uh, but that definitely has helped. It's anyone with a logical mindset, though, it, or an illogical mindset, sometimes uh, can make some really amazing stuff. I don't, I don't think it necessarily helps, but it doesn't hurt for sure. Yeah, I'm, I also have some uh, engineering background, as many on the stage here, but uh, that doesn't necessarily have to do with. The interest in redstone, it just came naturally from the game, and I don't think it's limited, it's open to anyone, um, as everything consists out of a few very basic components, and um, yeah, I don't think you need experience, but I also had a little bit of yeah, experience with programming and logic gates and things like that. All right, the next question is, what does Etho look like? Why is this in here? <laughs> Try would you like yeah. to? I got to pull. I got to pour through all the comments. So the video that Seth put up, asking for redstone-related questions, and that was the number one redstone-related question. <laughs> <laughs> what does Etho look like? <laughs> all right. You guys, thanks for the questions. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, next question. There's redstone, there's redstone flowing through his veins, all right? He's so, skin of mobs, and yeah. his hair is lava. Yeah. yeah. There's a little etho in all of us. Yeah. All right. Whoa. Next question. Do you come up with an idea, then find a way to make it work? Or do you look at a redstone mechanic, then find a design to implement in it? And I think this is an excellent question, because this kind of it gets at, um, whenever I'm asked, how do you do it? How do you come up with stuff? 
those are the two different ways that, that it happens. And I'll say they probably both happen equally when I'm trying to come up with stuff to do. It's just whatever strikes my fancy, whether it's I've just discovered a little glitch or some quirk of redstone or, uh, or I just want to, you know, make Donkey Kong, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's just whatever I, I feel like, but uh, they, they, both, they both can lead to really awesome things. Yeah, for me, actually, the only uh, time where I really wanted to base a machine uh, around a certain uh, yeah, uh, redstone feature was when the repeater locks were introduced, and I was really having a hard time to find a real good use for them. And I came up with a stopwatch, which was able to uh, yeah, stop time with a tenth of a second accuracy. And it used the repeater locks to freeze the time, pretty much. And that was the only time where I really uh, did use a contraction and a, a feature and build a machine around it, pretty much. Every other time, it's just, OK, we are on our survival server. We want to see, can we farm this? Can we build a machine around it? So yeah. <laughs> that, uh, and then we need to figure out uh, yeah, what kind of mechanics are necessary for this, and then build it up piece, uh, bit by bit. It's yeah. my approach. Just want to pitch in there, too. Um, I work a lot with uh, my friends of the Zip Crowd server. Um, often, it kind of goes like that. I have these weird dreams. And then I <laughs> come to the team speak and say, hey, guys, I dreamed about something. And yeah, it was like blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly, uh, 24 hours later, we have something crazy. And yeah, that's the community approach is something that is really cool. Often people think there's this one redstone genius, you know, and he figures it all out and boom, there it is. But to be honest, redstone is one of the most team intensive parts of Minecraft mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, Everybody has a speciality, you know. We got guys who are good in compacting things. We are good. Um, we have guys that can prototype ideas, and so it's all like it's basically an assembly line, you know. Prototype idea, first functioning prototype, compacting. So it's all the flow that is really cool about redstone. Yeah, I guess I could have added that as well when we were asking about how you, do you get better at redstone. It's really working together with other people who are also good at it is what made, uh, my, yeah, made me better. And that's the real cool thing that I have uh, such a server. And since of, due to my YouTube channel, I found a lot of very talented people I could work together with. So I'm kind of in a, yeah, a premium position here a little bit because of that. But yeah, that's, it's just try to find servers uh, where there are other people who are also yeah, did something, a little contraption which you find cool, and then try to work with them together. That's probably the best way to get better at it. And building something together is also more fun. And uh, in the end, it's going to be better because each of uh, the persons who were involved found a little uh, trick to get it even a little bit better, more compact, or yeah, in other ways, uh, more amazing. Think of something cool and s see if it's possible. And when it is, it's awesome. <laughs> That's it. Good answers. All right, next question. How do you feel about command block redstone as opposed to old school redstone? Old school redstone. Uh, I personally dislike command blocks. This is the asker. I do not personally dislike them. <laughs> and I try to avoid using them all the time. But whenever I upload something or see something uploaded without command blocks, I always see the same. You can do this better with command blocks types of comments. I don't even know the crafting recipe for a command block. <laughs> there is none. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bless your heart. Uh, I, I have an opinion on this for sure. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of the times features get added to Minecraft. And I mean, I put out snapshot videos whenever there's a snapshot. And every single snapshot video, there's, there's people complaining, this has ruined Minecraft. Uh, but really, the way I see it is, if you don't like it, don't use it. You know, it's mine, the great thing about Minecraft is that we can make the game into our own personal experience. So I say, you know, if you like playing survival Minecraft, why are you worrying about command blocks? You can't, you can't craft them. Uh, you know, it's an entirely different set of constraints. It's more difficult in a way because there's, you know, less options, but it's also, it's a little bit simpler in a way because there's less options. So, you know, there's survival and then the command blocks allow, you know, the custom map makers to do some really awesome stuff and build these cool custom maps and, and that definitely contributes to the way a lot of people play Minecraft. Not everyone though. So it's, it's sort of, I, I think it's, it's a little silly to, you know, get upset around, uh, around new features that you just, if you don't want to play with, you don't have to play with. That's, that's my take on it. When I first introduced the command blocks, I also disliked them because I thought there's no real purpose for them. And 
Uh, the Minecraft, at least vanilla Minecraft, is all about having simple blocks which everyone can easily understand. That's what my thought was. And the contraptions are putting those simple blocks together to make something amazing. That's why I also dislike mods like Feed the Beast because there is those very specialized, already complicated blocks which are where you, where you need to learn their functions and it's uh, and there's just so many different blocks for a certain. Uh, uh, specific things and the command block by now is just so powerful and there are so many things possible with it which weren't possible in vanilla that I think yeah it definitely has uh, it is a cool addition to the game and as long as it's not possible in survival that's uh, what I then I'm totally fine with it because yeah for redstone map makers it's really a good uh, thing but yeah as I said I personally don't use them have barely any um, uh, experience with it because it's just not a simple thing. It's really complicated sometimes, especially with the summon commands and all that stuff. You really need to learn how that thing works. Um, yeah, but it's just my opinion. Redstone um, or command blocks, better say, were really important to be added to the game. Um, map making and making custom maps became a very, very important and powerful part of the Minecraft community. This entire Minecraft uh, channels on YouTube that are solely based around uh, mini games and are extremely successful with it. So there's clearly a high demand for that. And by adding all these cool features um, with the command blocks, map making was taken to a next level. I mean, you know, the structure spawners and all these things. You can do very amazing things with these. And I don't think it interferes or messes with survival Minecraft. It's a different realm. It's a almost like a creative, a creative tool, like some, some, something you give a development team to make something for the game in a development environment. So it's a very good uh, addition and I'm really happy about it, although personally I don't use it much. Yeah. And because it's such a, it's a, like an integrated circuit, so to speak, yeah. it's a lot more stable uh, as far as patches go. You know, it's like a lot of times we may get a patch and all of a sudden a hopper or a, you know, a comparator doesn't quite work like it does you know, in the previous ones. But if you have one block and it has you know, commands in it, that'll be a lot more stable as things go. So it helps a lot with map makers. They don't have to constantly go back and update their, their maps. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. All right, next question is, how advanced do you think Redstone will get? I see dinner bone out in the crowd. <laughs> By the way, a big round of applause for Dinnerbone. It just yeah. deserves Woo! it. Right? Give it to him. Yeah, he's been personally responsible for many of the changes with the command blocks, and yeah, he made you know he gave the game a new dimension. So, really thanks yeah. for putting up with our complaints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you fixed our game, Dinnerbone. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so how advanced will Redstone get? <laughs> yeah, I think that sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. No. I, you know, I, I'm cool with whatever. Uh, do you think the addition of much more advanced Redstone mechanics benefit less experienced players or not? It's like one block which is an end gate or an uh, end gate, XOR gate or something. I don't think it would benefit anyone because it's better to see how you can actually uh, make these little contraptions. And for me, um, I think having some basic little contraptions already pre-built uh, in your mind and then making them together to a bigger uh, circuit is uh, what is most fun for me in Redstone. So I don't think you should spoil it too much by just giving the player all these fancy um, experience uh, advanced blocks. Also, as I said, because it's simpler to understand if each block is just does has very basic features, but that's my point. Uh, yeah. I don't know what your opinion about this I, is. I love the fact, I, you know, I love the aspects of like red power. You've got the little logic gates and you can stick them on the side or underneath. I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really change. An AND gate is an AND gate. It doesn't matter if this one little thing looks like a repeater or if it's three blocks with two redstone torches, a dust and a redstone torch coming out. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I think in a way, it's, it, if you understand the concept of an AND gate or an XOR gate or any of that, um, it's almost better to have it in the standard redstone dust and torches and, and whatnot because then you can actually look at it and kind of trace where things go. And, and from an educational standpoint, you understand logic through that. You don't really get it if it's just a little white thing and two, two red things come out and a random red thing comes you know, out. It's, it, you kind of miss that level of, of education and understanding. Yeah, agree. 
Okay, uh, well, we have about 15 minutes left in the panel. Uh, at this point, we are going to open it up to Q&A. So I believe there are mic stands Somewhere. being set up. I don't really know. You said to the left and the right. There's two of them. Yep, here's one. And uh, yeah, so we're going to open it up to questions from the audience. Just step up. Don't cause chaos and security hazards. Yeah. <laughs> You need to be a five-star redstoner in order to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Get Wrong. to the dang microphone now. YouTube dismissed yeah. the star right now. Right. Years ago already. So, we so we only, again, we only have 15 minutes, so we'll try and get through as many yeah. as we can. We'll try and answer them as quickly as yeah, we can. Yeah, that, that's go probably ahead already it. All right. So my question was, I destroyed a piece of the structure spawn, and it was the spawner part of it. And all of a sudden, my building just started rapidly, like, disappearing, and then reappearing, disappearing, and reappearing, disappearing. Why does that happen? Can you explain that to me? I don't know, but that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, you got, you're onto something there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why that would happen. There's a lot of ways. Oh. It's hard to tell. I mean, we can, that, that's a good question, actually. We often get very specific questions about things. I built this in this redstone contraption, and this one torch is not going off. Why is that so? Well, it's really hard to answer such specific things. In, yeah, some wiring is wrong, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Are you on a server? I, I, think, I think if you figure it out for yourself, you'll actually learn a lot about redstone. So, I mean, I, I can't help you. I, I mean, like, I'm up here. I, it's not a, a good server. Way to turn it around. Yeah. It's not a server. Multiplayer the server. Things disappear, and lag creates a lot of that. Mix that happen sometimes. All right. Question yeah. right here. Um, uh, repeater locking was a mechanic that was added a long time ago. Um, and it was used a bit when it came out, and then all of a sudden it just kind of like dropped out and everyone stopped using it. And I was wondering, kind of like, if there were anything, any ways that you could like implement it to make things a lot more compact, like now. Oh. I don't know. I just used repeater locking the other day to make a little timing circuit for my horse. You know, test my horse speed. So, you know, some things are are useful in more contexts than others, and I think repeater locking is one of those that's that's not useful in as many. But when it is useful, it's what you need exactly. So, yeah, yeah it, it depends. For example, you can make a very easy falling edge detector with it, which doesn't have noisy pistons in it or, st uh, or stuff like this. But and as I said, I used it in this uh, timing device, but. In general, it, not every feature has necessarily to have one million uh, uh, yeah, ways to use it. Um, and I think it's a cool addition. It doesn't um, harm anyone, and it's easy to understand. So yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's nice because it's not just it's not a locking repeater block. It's yeah. just a repeater that happens to yeah. have that capability. Okay. Next. What is your opinion on making redstone a little more articulate, like the red power mod, without the compacting of like just this block is an end gate? The fact that you can place it on walls, at ceilings, and everything can go anywhere. But ma and how um, redstone is not limited to a 15 um, block current because that can be a hindrance in a lot of builds. Um, well, that's the thing, you know, in game designing. It's very difficult to add stuff to a very well running game. You have to be very careful because you know how crazy the Minecraft community is? I mean, you know, if you add something, there's crazy people coming up with very crazy stuff and it can easily disbalance the game, especially if you look on servers, you know? So you have to be really careful with making one feature too powerful. Um, and there is ways to extend the redstone signal infinitely. It just needs some trickery and it ain't cheap because you need some pistons and redstone blocks, but it's actually doable. So I don't think it needs many more features in the sense of making it more yeah, elaborate because it is already very elaborate. It's just not the most compact thing, but it's tricky to add new stuff. It's, mm -hmm. You have to be careful. There's a saying in the culinary world, you cook with what's in the fridge. And uh, I, I think that's kind of the beauty of having these limitations, is yes. you actually get to sit down, you look at it, you scratch your head, scratch your beard, and, uh, and then you go, wait a minute, what if I do this and move that over there? It works! And then that's, 
if everything was just kind of open and handed to you on a plate, if you remove those limitations, it almost, in a weird sort of twisted way, it wouldn't be as much fun. You know, actually, yeah. I've re heard about this and read about this a lot. Um, limitation yeah, forces creativity or enhances the creativity because yeah, if you are limited in a certain way, there is you have spent more time figuring out a way around it. Yeah, and uh, that way you also learn a lot. So just making it all obvious and easy, for example, with Pretty Beast, is uh, what I don't like that much. So I think this, this, these limitations, it's just perfect. How do I at the moment in Red, Redstone? Do you like Feed the Beast? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. What's your guys' opinion on like vertical redstone and like the mods they have for that? That vertical redstone, what's our opinion? Vertical redstone. Yeah. That's pretty similar to the previous mods question. question. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it with torches. It's not really needed. It would not add anything. It would make things a little bit more compact, maybe, you know, but I don't think it would add new functionality, so it's not really needed, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, nope. there's ways to do it, you know, you can get your redstone up. <laughs> Still would like straight up and down redstone, but yeah, it's, it'd and be yeah. nice. It'll be nice, but it's not yeah. really something that is yeah, desperately no. needed, right? No. In my opinion. So, yeah. yeah, I agree. I think I agree. More space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, no, next. Wait, um, if you were to add one thing that has to do with redstone into the game, what would it be? Mm. <coughs> Dinner bone's still here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hint at anything? Do it now. Uh, I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think lasers would be cool. You have like a laser block, and it can point at another block. It'll provide redstone power to that block. If you have a laser pointing at another laser, you can chain them together. And, uh, and then like a, it would work kind of like a tripwire, so if somebody walked in front of it, they would break the laser beam, and I think it'd be, I think it'd be cool. And you could attach it to a shark's head. Oh yeah, you have to add sharks too. <laughs> oh yeah, we need sharks. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm, but honest, honestly, I, I'm cool with whatever they add. I just have fun with playing around with the weird stuff that they come up with. Um, so. I, me and JL, lately, a, a while ago, we played with this mod, it's called Hugo Craft, and it had really interesting ways of moving blocks about and making some things happen. For example, you know, we have, you can matching, a, a, I don't know, a, a mill and you have a spinning wheel going on and stuff like that. That is something I kind of sometimes would love. We had that to kind of make more moving parts somehow in Minecraft. But I'm very unsure how that would be done and how, what would be good and what not. But that is something I feel that would be cool. I no talked way. to Dinnerbone to this yesterday already. Um, I would like to have an overhaul to the minecarts, and one redstone part of this would be just making the boosters, yeah, the power level of the boosters depending on the power level which but you are powering them with, so that you have, you know, adjustable boosting strength and also a convenient way to make minecarts go at a certain speed and not just full speed or full stop. Uh, so just make the booster rails analog. That's oh, one cool. simple thing which I would like yeah, to add. Cool. Yeah. Okay. The, the thing I'd really like to add has actually just been added to the game and you guys probably don't even know. Dinnerbone has changed the way weighted pressure plates work. They went from terrible to awesome overnight. <laughs> um, they used to be, it was, uh, it used to be depending on how many items, so eggs or pumpkins or whatever would go on it, it would vary the strength of the redstone coming out. That's been changed now to entities, so it'll count mobs for you. And hey, guess what? The heavy one, once you get to the 165, 175 mob range, it goes full strength. Hey, guess what? You know how many mobs it takes to get to level 30 enchanting? About 165, 175 mods. <laughs> uh, mobs. You do the math, right? So instead of just sitting there AFK, you come back and you have 5,000 mobs there and you've crashed your game, <laughs> you can have it automatically shut off once it hits exactly at the 30 yeah. mob level. Don't it's you beautiful. have to say one more time, Mojang doesn't like mob farming. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I'm going to yeah. use that. <laughs> Me first. I called it dibs. <laughs> Darn it. I just want more vegetables. <laughs> Did you say more vegetables? <laughs> I would love to create. Proud of you. you could create more uh, farms and everything with that. I, I got a Harvest Moon shirt. I want to recreate this in Minecraft. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> we need more muffins. All right. Next question. Next question. So, uh, how long did it take you guys to learn how to redstone? 
Oh, well. I'm, I'm still learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's an ongoing process. Yes. It's, and it, it's just an interest you have, and you keep on yeah. chasing that thing all the time. You, yeah. you have never learned out because they're always adding new redstone, redstone functionality yeah. or even just blocks which aren't intended to be redstone you uh, are directly with uh, have something to do with redstone, but they still influence the game a lot and add a lot to uh, redstone mechanics. So yeah. you never learn out, and I'm still learning yeah. it. And True. Yeah. Even blocks that are not redstone often affected. You know, uh, half slabs. Yeah. They, how, or often there was changed how a glowstone actually interacts with redstone. Oh yeah, time. right. Yeah, and that was a big yeah. change. Nether brick half slab. Oh wait, that was last year. <laughs> 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 All right, next question. Okay, have you ever um, made a error or like break a dust or a repeater and it actually made something cool? Sorry, like can you repeat you, the... If you messed up on when you're making a circuit and then it actually did something that Good. was cool? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think that happens a lot. Right? I, Some inventions are probably just from bugged out contraptions and suddenly you have something that does something crazy <laughs> and you think, oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I believe one gentleman out there has a blinking structure spawner. Yeah, so, yeah it happens. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Of course it happens. You know, nobody is flawless. You know, mistakes lead to bigger things. That's what I think. Hopefully not bigger mistakes. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi there. There are a lot of moms here who have brought their children to the convention, and we have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh. But I, I just want to ask you, what support have you received from your moms and dads to get you to where you are right now? Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hi, moms. moms. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Thanks, dad. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, yes. my, my mom and dad support me a lot. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously growing up, uh, my they both encouraged, uh, especially my dad encouraged me to get in, in, involved in programming, and I feel like that's, you know, well, that's contributed towards what I do now a lot. Um, my, my mom watches my videos, and she'll be like, oh, that redstone lawnmower you made, it's so cool. I <laughs> she shows it to all her friends that don't play Minecraft, that, you know, have no clue what Minecraft is, and, uh, and I, I love my mom and my dad. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, Mama, is it Mama Bling? Mama, Mama Bling. Bling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my parents, uh, well, they want me to study more and play less Minecraft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need to force myself and find a good balance between both. And I, at least I'm, I can't play Minecraft without them disturbing me too much. So that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to age myself a little bit, but when I was a kid, my mom bought me pretty much every nerdy toy at Radio Shack that they had. <laughs> yeah. um, so I had a little circuit board with the little springs that you would attach to wires. And there were resistors and capacitors and all of that. Um, so yeah, if it weren't for her, I mean, she, she really filled my, my head full of all sorts of experiences. I, I know for sure I wouldn't be where I am now if it weren't for her. Yeah. Same here, I think. I mean, we saw a lot of great Minecraft parents around here. That is uh, something that always impresses me a lot. And in general, I mean, Minecraft is a great game, and it's a very, it's a game for kids that are smart. And they can find a place where they can really show their skills and learn by, you know, helping to develop things. Um, yeah, they can achieve things in life. So if you want to support gaming for your kids, I really think Minecraft is a wise choice there. Because, yeah, it is a creative game, and look at that. I mean, we have a great community. It's peaceful. I think a lot of parents saw that here, too, how supportive we are with each other. And, yeah, support Minecraft, moms. It's a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I All guess right. that's Yeah, we got, we got just a little over a minute left. Oh, um, okay, sorry. My dad's a bit of an outdoor outman, so he probably thinks it's something. Um, <laughs> and my mom's pretty supportive. She helped me create a banner for my channel and well she's a graphic artist so she's it came out really well so thanks mom <laughs> thanks mom all right we have uh, very little time left in the panel uh, we'll just take one more question and um, uh, yeah um have you ever worked so hard on a project and then just given up 
gave up? Yes. That's a great yeah. question. Yeah, I've, I've definitely worked on, I've worked on a lot of projects. A lot of the stuff I do, I mean, I, I have a lot of ideas that never come, come to fruition because they just aren't possible, and I thought they would be, but they don't work out. Hey, happens to the best, man. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Yep. For me, it's like I have worked uh, on projects, or uh, thought about ideas, but never started working on them because I didn't find the time for it yet. There's only one project which I pretty much never finished, but started working on it a lot. And the point is, it every uh, with, uh, it project has been, uh, uh, we've been working on this for like a more than a year, so it's every time the new update came out, it, it changed the way I would uh, tackle the problem. And so I had so many new ideas that I never finished it because so many newer stuff got added and I didn't know how to do it now because too many options. <laughs> <laughs> Don't burn yourself out. If you think a project yeah. is going to be too big, find some help. Yeah. Yes, work yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. All right, guys, it looks like we're all out of time. Yep. Uh, thanks so much for coming out. It was awesome seeing you all. Woo! Um, don't come up here. Uh, we can't. We can't stay here to yeah, answer exactly. questions or whatever else. Uh, we're gonna be downstairs we'll somewhere be after. So uh, try and come find us if you have more questions. You don't have to go home. <laughs> but you can't stay here. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good mind con.